Hello, my name is Nick Rao. I'm a campaigner with Friends of the Earth, and this is uh, another one in my series of blogs about the work we're doing in Paraguay. And today I'm speaking to you from Paraguay. It happens to be in very sunny Paraguay. Um, lest you be too envious, I've been here about 10 days. The weather's been terrible, freezing, pissing down, and I've had a terrible cold, and I've been stuck in a, a, a wooden hut in the middle of the countryside. But today, the sun has come out and it is glorious. Um, and I'm in the offices of Sobre Vivencia, and they happen to have a brilliant viewpoint from which you can see, um, yeah, get a great view of the city. So um, if you hang on a minute, I'll, uh, I'll try and give you a glimpse. If you look north, you can see we're in a very pleasant tree-filled suburb of Asuncion. But if you look east, you get a great view of the River Paraguay. This huge artery that flows down from the northern borders of Brazil, Paraguay and Bolivia, cuts the country of Paraguay in half runs all the way south to Argentina and across there, across the other side of the river, we can see Argentina. But of course I'm not here to enjoy myself, I'm here as part of the annual monitoring, monitoring and evaluation trip that we make, uh, basically to see the, work, the, the projects, um, how it's performing, are we being successful in our, you know, our, our task of empowering uh, communities who are suffering the impacts of soy expansion. We're working with seven partner communities. Uh, and what we need to do is, is find out, you know, have the communities, um, are, they, are they taking on board the training in terms of legal work, for example, legal training, have the communities got the hang of it? Are they reporting crimes such as deforestation or illegal pesticide use? Uh, then are the authorities responding to those reports? Are the authorities investigating? And then, of course, you know, what's happening as a consequence? Are the criminals being prosecuted? And are we winning in our battle against this, um, or having any success at all in our battle against this illegal activity? Then we're teaching agroecology. We're teaching uh, techniques like, like crop rotation, or organic composting, or restoring uh, habitat, tree cover, so it can act uh, to, you know, to, to improve conservation value, or to protect watercourses. Do, do the communities understand what they're doing? Are they implementing these techniques on their farms? And then thirdly, community radio, or radio in general. Radio is really important for these communities and for us in terms of pushing the messages. Um, we don't have access to the major, the, you know, the, 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 the major media sources. Community radio is really important. Many community radio stations exist and we're working to um, help communities create programs for themselves. Uh, people within the communities are participating uh, in, in um, producing daily or weekly broadcasts when they can, they can um, push these positive messages out to other members of the community. Also, we have link-ups between the, the small local radio stations and national radio. So these pilot projects that we're working on in our partner communities, their successes can be broadcast across the nation and we can multiply the effect. So I'm just back from four days in the countryside with representatives of our communities that we're working with. I have to say they're all delighted with the progress of the project and the help they've been receiving. They're all delighted, but unfortunately they're also reporting a lot of difficulties. Some of them anticipated, some of them not difficulties like the, the growing atmosphere of political repression that we're seeing in the country, the increasing number of confrontations and, and the severity of confrontations between soy growers and small farmers. We're often seeing soy growers being accompanied uh, in, in the countryside now by paramilitaries, armed police, even the military, riot vehicles, rubber bullets uh, and tear gas. And uh, as a result of some of these confrontations, a number of our community members are facing criminal charges. We even have problems with the weather, in fact. So uh, here in, in Paraguay, they are suffering the effects of climate change. They've been experiencing periods of extreme cold. They've been suffering successive and increasingly severe droughts. And ironically, also flooding has become much worse flooding seems to happen every year now and in, you know we're in the winter um, winter the winter in Paraguay is meant to be cold but dry but this year it's been flooding after um, summer flooding so it's you know it's incredibly difficult even new they're even dealing with having to deal with new pests Don Isidoro for example Don Isidoro is a, a community member from La Pastora and he was telling me how um, a new little gusano a little grub has been eating his pasture which means 
he's got nowhere to graze his animals. As a consequence, he's going to have to deforest some more of his land to grow pasture to keep his animals alive. And this is the guy who's committed to agroecology. He's committed to conservation. Total, you know, he's with such a passion. But he, he, he's having to respond to this new threat. Some of his neighbours were so severely affected by the droughts, which lasted four months last year, uh, that they have had to turn some of their land over to tobacco, which is a cash crop, simply in order to survive. So, you know, they're, they're committed to the aims of the project, but we're having all these new um, challenges thrown at us. Well, I'm here for two more weeks. I hope to be able to share more information with you on the project. Um, there's lots of stuff going on, and um, as long as I've got internet access, I'll, I'll do my best to, um, to speak to you again soon. Thanks very much for listening.